magnificent bastard who wrote six books, Adam Corolla! Thanks for coming out, you guys. Been enjoying your town, sort of. <laughs> it's okay, you know. I wrote some stuff down because I have thoughts about the place you live. <laughs> uh, so, a bunch of stuff. Uh, first, I, I fucking love this shit because I'm, I'm from L.A. and I'm in Malibu half the time and there's no real people there. And I, I love this going into the, like, Bass Pro shops and <laughs> seeing dads siding M16s with their four-year-olds going... <laughs> It's, it's refreshing coming from where I come from. We did get out to the Bass Pro Shop. Uh, I did have this, this happen, which I thought was, was kind of interesting. We, uh, we had a drink at some point. The, uh, the bartender at the place we were drinking had tattooed on his knuckles, on one hand, punk, and on the other hand, rock. The bar we were in was inside of a Guy Fieri's restaurant in Branson. <laughs> Is there anything less punk rock than Guy Fieri's restaurant right in the middle of Branson? Yeah, so we went down to Flavortown. <laughs> and uh, I, I'd never been to Branson. We drove out, we drove out, we checked out the Bass. We went to two Bass Pro Shops. We went to the one in Branson and then the one that's bigger than many countries, I guess, or a lot of developing nations. Uh, the one that's, uh, I don't know, five miles from here up the road, pretty damn amazing. I, uh, I went to a little coffee shop near the hotel for breakfast. It's, it's kind of nice that even in your, your quaint little towns and in the towns all around the United States, the, little, the real Americana kind of throwback quaint towns, there's still a lot of fucking weirdos. <laughs> there's still weird dudes working at coffee shops. I don't know where they're bringing them in from, but... And I was saying to Mike and Chris, I was saying, I think as far as weirdo employment, coffee shops are the new video stores, right? Like when a fucking weirdo who's unemployable because of the way he wears his hair and he has aggressive piercings needs a job. When I was young, you'd work at a video store. Now you work at a coffee shop. I ordered a latte, I drank it there. You tell me if you think this is gay or not. The dude behind the counter made me a foam heart. Now, it's not a foam cock and balls, but it's a little sexually aggressive, is it, is it not? If you're gonna do something out of foam, how about that finger that says we're number one? Or a cowboy hat. What else did I write down? Let's see. Uh, oh, well, this is something I stumbled onto. Uh, we, were, uh, we went to Billy Gale's restaurant. <laughs> Billy, you know, their sign, in, instead of like established in, you know, 1972 or whatever, it should just say, making fat people fatter for over a generation. Like, I've never seen so many fat people in my life. 
And they were confused when I told them I wanted less than five eggs in my omelet. They were like, what? You from Africa, son? Uh, they have a 14-inch pancake. I, I had a 14-inch pancake. Anyone who has a vintage Datsun Z car knows it has a 14-inch rim on it. That's how big these fucking pancakes. So we ate there. Also discovered there's something called million-dollar bacon, I think now. Maybe billion-dollar bacon, candy bacon. And then I was thinking... Kevin Bacon and his wife have a child. They have a girl, you know. They could have named her Candy. And then you'd have the fucking hottest name ever for a female, Candy Bacon. Like, who wouldn't want to fucking hook up with Candy Bacon? I looked her name up. It was Susie. The fuck's that have to do with bacon, bitch? I'm going to settle his hash about her bacon and candy name next time we speak. I had this thought. It's a little bit morbid, which you guys tell me. I was talking to someone today, and they were telling me that there was a young comedian, young 28, 29-year-old comedian, very promising comedian, and he killed himself like on Thursday. I don't know if you guys heard this story, but it's kind of making the rounds in, in amongst the comedic circles. And this person was saying to me, man, this guy, like so much talent, so he had so much to live for, and he killed himself. And I said to the person, but think about all the people who have nothing to live for who never kill themselves. I mean, <laughs> that's a victory, right? There's probably one guy who has everything to live for he, who kills himself for every 25,000. Like, I was like, my parents should have killed themselves, but they're here. So that's a victory. I mean, not for me and my sister, but I mean for <laughs> society. Let's see. Talked about the Bass Pro Shop. Oh, man, did I get pissed off. Okay. All right. Now I'm mad. We were driving out to Branson, we were heading uh, through, I guess you go through the Ozarks. It's, it's beautiful, it's a, it's a beautiful drive. All the highways are cut right into that granite, you know, big granite wall, I guess it's granite or limestone or whatever the, whatever the fuck it is, but some, somebody was swinging a pickaxe back then. And it's beautiful, and we got to the off-ramp, and we're going down a highway, and we got to my least favorite thing, which I see all over Los Angeles, which is the red arrow, the left turn arrow. Now, the signal's green, but in LA, the arrow's red, and even though no cars are coming, and you could save safely turn, it still remains red. And I scream all the time, why doesn't it just blink yellow? We'll just fucking turn when it's safe to turn. And everyone's like, oh, come on, it's Los Angeles, they can't pull that off. In the mountains of the Ozarks, <laughs> on a fucking desolate country road, we got to a red arrow that then started blinking yellow. And I went, these fucking shit kickers and this podunk piece of town with their fucking Bass Pro Shops and their goddamn hillbillies who racists and run around. And they, where they filmed Deliverance. They have a blinking fucking yellow. Sorry, took a turn for the insulting, but Jesus Christ. Some toothless racist put that up there. We can't even pull that shit off in Malibu or in West LA. Anyway, I was pissed. All right. So technology, technology has come to the Ozarks. Should we, uh, should we bring up, let's see, Kyle Dunnigan is going to join us. We have uh, Brian and Gina are joining us. Hey, Brian Gina from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, who is that, Doctor Fauci? Hey. Who is that? No, man, come on, man, don't don't oh, sass me. Oh, bro. oh, oh so it's Jurak Joe Biden, man. Oh, so not 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 Jurak, uh, Joe Bible. Oh, Joe, Joe Biden. Bible, baby. Joe Bible, baby. Yeah, come on, man, get your face out of your ears. No, my 
Well, Joe, I'm sorry, uh, President Biden. I didn't. I, it seemed like he had glasses on and a weird Bob Marley hat. I didn't know. Yeah, man, I'm trying. I'm trying a new look out. <laughs> you trying a new look? Yeah, man. You got. Yeah, I'm, I'm over here in. Uh, I'm, I'm visiting the, the Crown Pimp Mahama uh, in, in, uh, in, in uh, Arabia, man. Oh, fit Crown in. Pimp. Oh wait, let's heat up the audio a little, Chris. We're trying to we're trying to figure this out because it's a little. So yes, let me just let me just clarify. President Joe Biden, if I if I heard correctly, is visiting the Crown Pimp in Saudi Arabia, which would explain the garish bedroom. Yeah, man, it's my hotel room. We got audio problems there, man. Get your get your show together, pal. Come on, man. <laughs> no, we we can hear you now. We just had to pot you. Yeah. We just what? had to. Pot- we had to pot you up, that's all. Who? Who did? You said it. You said it, pal. Now look, I don't want to get I don't want to get you riled up, uh, Joe, but a lot of controversy, you know? You you said you didn't want to deal with these rogue nations. Now you're going there and begging for oil? That doesn't seem right. Um, oh man, I, I didn't beg for nothing, pal. I just, I I, I, I I tried to, to punch him in the face. It looked like a fist bump. I, I just I, I came up short. That's all. Yeah. So, and and I I know there's been a lot of controversy with your son Hunter Biden and the laptop, and there's uh, there's audio recordings of you telling him that there's an article that's coming out in the Times, and he's in in the clear. But you said you didn't do any business with him, and you never knew about his business. Is that something you're worried about? Yeah, man. No, I'm not. Wor- I'm not worried uh, about that at all. I'm not worried about my my boy Hunter is. He, he's a good kid. He just got into a little trouble. And every, come on, man. Everyone gets in a little trouble sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, uh, he was weighing his crack, man. And he's not getting, because of inflation, he's not getting what he used to get, man. <laughs> oh, and the crack. People are hurt. People are hurting. Yeah. yeah. People, yeah. People, people are suffering there. And, uh, uh, that's a uh, yeah. fault. Is, is 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 former President Trump anywhere uh, in the in the vicinity? Oh man, hold on a second, man. Well, you talk, talk to Gina Grad. All right, we'll talk to Gina. Yeah, it, it it looks like he's in President Trump's bedroom, so I wouldn't imagine Trump would be very far away. It's weird they'd be together, but we'll you never find know. Out, yeah. yeah, strange bedfellows. Can we? Uh, we're gonna play a little. <laughs> oh. How many times do I gotta tell you it's not a Trump? Trans Trump, please. So studying. So uh, Trans Trump. So, Get it straight, pal. Get it straight. All right. So so Trump is transitioning into a woman, probably with his eye on the next election, knowing that there's some very strong intersectional points to be had when one transitions. Is that now a lot of people, Donald Trump, are going to claim that's why you're doing it. Look, let people say what they want, okay? But you've got to vote for me. You got to <laughs> vote for me. There's absolutely no f- of choice. You're transphobic, okay? You're transphobic if you don't vote for me. Trans Trump. Wow, that's a great message. 2024. Wow. Should we uh, play a little uh, blah blah blog? I think Chris is gonna Chris is gonna run that, uh, but I don't know where Chris went. I think he's dealing with some uh, audio crap. So, uh, oh, didn't uh, your ex-wife just died? I'm sorry to sorry to hear that. Oh, she did. Sad. Yeah. What? Oh my God! Yeah. I haven't heard this. How would you not know about this? Well, Donna, I don't want to put uh, words in your mouth, and I certainly don't want to put on my tinfoil hat, but um, I did hear that she was found at the bottom of the stairs. Were you anywhere near there when she passed? Look, look, this is, first of all, this is total news to me. I'm totally shocked. It's, this is devastating. But, uh, no, I did not push her down the stairs, Gina Grant, if that's what you're inferring Just- here. Just checking. You're a terrible. Look, excuse me. Excuse me. You're a terrible person. Okay. I you apologize. and Fulbright are terrible people. What do I do? <laughs> you're just you're near her. Okay. It's guilt by association. Okay. Fair I'm very toxic. That's fair. Adam, you're both toxic people. Would, would, Adam, please fire them. I, I'll fire them. <laughs> would, would, would you like some time to grieve? I mean, you just heard the news. I'm good now. Thank you. Okay. So that was. 
but but let me let me just be clear. You just heard about it just now. I just heard about this news. I, I've been off the grid a little bit, you know, uh-huh. doing my thing. And you she, know, uh, sometimes as a as a lady, when it's that time of month, I've got to unplug from the internet. <laughs> no, he is he right about this. that. She is the mother of three of your children. I think it's just two. I think I just got the two kids. I got the Ivana, you know, Ivanka. Ivanka. Uh, very, I, confusing, I, very close names. Way yeah, too close. Yeah, I, I, I think it's three. I heard three, but uh, I, I don't know. How's, uh, how's ba- three? What's the difference? Okay. How's Baron doing? Is he six foot 14 now? Yeah, he actually was just uh, recruited by the Nets. He's going to be playing forward next year for the Nets. Oh, my God. Wow. That's big news. He's seven foot two. Very goofy time period of his life. Very awkward. And, and very how awkward. is he taking your transition? I sort of devastated, I think is the word. But once I win, look, all will be well. All will be well. Once Trans Trump enters the office, I move back into my house, redecorate it, no more red room, green room, all pink rooms for Trans Trump White House. All right. Well, Trans Trump, uh, you can play along with Blah Blah Blog. Maybe Sylvester Stallone will make an appearance. Uh, who knows who's uh, Who who's knows? Out there. It's a Maybe- grab bag. Perhaps Jeff Goldblum. I just saw the latest uh, Jurassic World, and you were—he uh, was fabulous in it. So. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, also uh, groom her out. Yes, for my next picture. <laughs> All right, we're ready wow. for blah blah blog. It's time for blah blah blog. The game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. All right, the first blog. If a corporation can be defined as a person, why not redefine vaginas as AK-47s? That way, they'd be free of governmental restrictions by those who care about the sanctity of life. Is it Samantha B., Jane Fonda, or Lena Dunham? Oh. This is a real wow. head scratcher, because I, I have no idea where this is going. I, I don't, so if it, you could redefine a vagina as an AK-47 or an M16, and then what? Then, they, then they'd be free of governmental restrictions by those who care about the sanctity of life. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm. Yeah, that interesting turn of Absolutely sure. no sense. All right, these are, they're all world-class blowhards. There's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts there. Uh, transitioning uh, Donald or Trump? Well, these are all disgusting. Uh, you know, they're not physically fat pigs, but inside they're fat pigs. Let's all agree with that. They're disgusting people. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, they are. Uh, but I do agree the vagina is like a machine gun, in a way, you know. You got to keep it clean or else it misfires. <laughs> I think I'm going to go uh, that uh, Jade Fonda, because even though she's tiny, she's got a big mouth. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? Uh, I'm going to go with Lena Dunham on this one. Mm. I didn't... didn't I, wait yeah. a minute. Didn't Samantha B transitioning Trump... Didn't Samantha B call your daughter a feckless cunt? She did. I actually refer to her as Samantha D minus. I don't know if you've seen her show. It's a disaster. Total disaster. Wasn't that a controversy a couple of years ago? Do you guys remember that? Yeah, she did. That sounds familiar. I remember that. I also did call my daughter that, so it's sort of a wash. Oh, so she was, she was just quoting you. She was quoting me, yes. Oh, okay, all right. Well, then I'm not nearly as outraged. And I can see why you're not uh, outraged either. I, th- I thought she did that on her own. I'm all the right. only one who could call her a cut, though. I am still pissed. All right, um, Jane Fonda, oh, Jesus Christ. I, I feel like, um, I, 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 th- I thought it, I, uh, who do you guys think? Gina, you go. 
Well, I think Lena's been um, leaning lately on her new marriage, so I think she's been kind of out of the game. Jane Fonda, I don't mean to judge, but perhaps her better procreating years are behind her, mm. so maybe that's not really where she's... It's off her radar. Yeah, I, this, this smells of like a Samantha B writer room to me. I'm going Samantha B. I think Jane Fonda may have had her snatch replaced with not an M16, but possibly a bear trap. <laughs> Oh I think oh, Lena Dunham. I think she's trying to get relevant again. I'm going Lena Dunham on this. Ah. Uh, transitioning Trump, did you take? Who'd you take? I took that uh, loudmouth uh, from on Golden Pond, Jade Funda. Okay. <laughs> the blog Terrible blog. movie. <laughs> the blog belongs to Jane Fonda. Oh! oh. oh. Trans Trump always wins, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Trans Trump in the lead once again. It's actually you true. You must hate it, but I always win. Because I know people. I know people. I know how they think. That's why I was president. First female president, Trans Trump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I urge you, hold close those who give your heart shelter. Cultivate a community of people wow. who feed and nurture your spirit. We face great challenges. The road ahead is arduous and long. To endure, to persevere, to ultimately triumph, we must find deep strength in one another. Is it? This is a accessories poster. Car- that's more than 140 characters. <laughs> <laughs> is it Michelle Obama, Alyssa Milano, or Cory Booker? Big. All right. Oh, boy. Can I say this? Everyone talks about nurturing and feeding your spirit. I don't really think I have a spirit. Is that possible? I agree. I agree yeah, with that. I, off yeah. I, am, I am spiritless. I have no spirit. I mean, I have the kind of spirit that a high school football team may have when they're pointing at the other bleachers doing the we've got the spirit. Yes, we do. We got the spirit. How about you? Like, I have kind of like pom-pom spirit, but I, I don't think there's a spirit in me that needs to be nurtured or it died many years ago and is yeah. <laughs> decrepit. I don't know what the fuck happened. When, why, when did Cory Booker turn into such a colossal pussy? Because he's like this big stout guy <laughs> who played football in college, and yet he's a supreme pussy whenever he talks now. Alyssa Milano's... Uh, This could be, kind of feels Michelle Obama-y in that she's not saying anything, which Michelle Obama says lots of nice things that don't add up to anything. So I'm going Michelle Obama. Ooh. I got your answer for Cory Booker, fucking dude with the Stanford. Oh, that's what happened. But then the big question is, why is Cory Booker on this list? I always think maybe, Mm -hmm. why, maybe. What do you got, Brian? Uh, This feels very uh, spiritual. I almost thought it was a Bible verse. Uh, It feels very Michelle Obama in me. All right. I'm very stumped by this one. I'll be honest with you. This is a tough one, okay? We got to think it through. We can't rush this, okay? Let's see here. Well, Michelle Obama, she's been kind of quiet, you know. When when they go low, I go lower, so I don't think it was that big. I'm going to say, I don't think that uh, Milano has the brains for that. I really don't. She's got a very small cranium. I don't think she could fit as much brains in there. So I'm going to go with the total loser, Cory Booker, for the win. Trans Trump, two to zero. (laughs) I'm... I I feel like I should just do with what do whatever Trans Trump does because she does end up winning a lot. But um, and I think I have two words for you about Cory Booker, Rosario Dawson. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, P um, This this yeah. This doesn't feel Milano esque. I think I'm gonna go Michelle Obama as well. All right. The blog Both belongs. Losers. The blog belongs to Cory Booker. Oh, Damn, Trump, 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 two Trump, zero. Trump. You're both total losers. What a group of losers that I'm playing this game with. Jesus. It's a Jeez. sad, sad day for you people. Should have listened to my instincts. What was he doing mm-hmm. on that list? Oh, trans Trump, always right. What do I win? What, what's the prize here? 
You get a little something called pride and dignity, Trans Trump. I've already got that. Got that in spades, okay? I don't need your pride. I want like 20 bucks. Can I get 20 bucks? Yeah, can, but, can yeah I think that? we can arrange that. Okay. It, all right, here we go. I want to live at Guy Fieri's ranch. Yeah. I want to wake up and be fed and look at trees. Sorry, I keep Guy's grocery gra- games on a loop in my room. It comforts me. So no matter what time, I wake to see fun. Thanks, dude. Is it wow. Seth Rogen? Adam Carolla. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Seth Rogen, Christina Applegate, or Pete Davidson? Oh, Ooh. man. Pete Davidson, Jesus Christ. When you were watching him be the least funny cast member on SNL two and a half years ago, would you ever have thought of this, that he was out and about? Like, he's kind of one of the biggest stars out there right now for no fucking good reason, but he's got that, he's got that big dick. Oh, wait, Pete's joined us. Sorry, Pete. Uh, yeah, I was uh, a little insulting or whatever what you said. I No, I was complimenting you on your big dick energy. Uh, thanks, I guess. <laughs> Did, what's it like being with Kim Kardashian? Uh, it's cool, I think. <laughs> you, well, you also, don't... Kim Kardashian just took her $100 million private jet to Australia to see you, Pete, because she hadn't seen you in like four weeks and couldn't take it anymore. That's what, oh, that's what I read. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> it seems okay. weird that you would answer everything with a question mark because, you know, if someone said, what's it like to be with Kim Kardashian, I'd, I'd, I'd give an emphatic yes. Uh, Yes. <laughs> No, I mean, like, what I mean is, like, well, watch. Ask me what it's like to be with Kim Kardashian. Uh, What's it like to be with my girlfriend? Uh, You have to say Kim Kardashian. What's uh, what's it like to be with uh, Kim Kardashian? Fucking awesome, dude. What? No. I'm... You know her? No, I don't know her. That's my point. I don't. I don't when know you. I haven't seen you. I've been around her a lot. No, no, I'm not. With, I'm doing an improv game here. I know. I know. Like. Oh, cool. Okay, so yeah. what I'm saying is, is I'm not really with Kim Kardashian. Oh, all right. Oh, cool. All right, all right but. <laughs> Maybe we should switch to Ariana Grande. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ask me what, what it was like banging Ariana Grande. Oh, uh, we like dated like a lot of the same girls, dude. No, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't fuck Ariana Grande. She would never uh, let you, me do that. That's probably, that's not, probably why you guys broke up. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> You gotta, like, yeah, I like, have sex with your girlfriend and stuff. No, or, like, I. They get mad at you. You're maybe you smoking too much pot or something. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not saying to smoke pot. I'm. Yeah. Okay. What what I was just ask me. I've are we not on a we, show right now? Yeah, we are. We're trying to do a show, yeah. and you got me sidetracked here. Well, what do we? What's the show? It's it's a live podcast, and oh. huh? Oh. Oh. Well, what happened to blah 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 or what? Oh, okay. I, I, we were doing that. Then you got me sidetracked oh. here. So the, oh. so let me just Sorry. ask you: What's it like being with Kim Kardashian? Uh, depends on when it is. Like sometimes it's like cool or whatever, and then sometimes it's like not cool. But mostly it's like good or whatever. <laughs> well, okay. uh, again, uh, not, I, 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 if she sees this, I don't think she's gonna find it to be a ringing endorsement about being with her. Uh, no, she's cool. Like, uh, she doesn't like watch anything I do because she wants to stay turned on, she said. (laughs) Wow. Oh, you mean like if she saw you on SNL not being funny, maybe the bloom would be off the rose. 
Yeah, like she like would leave rehearsals or whatever. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. And uh, you still feel like you got that big dick energy? Uh, I guess. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Sorry. Where the hell were we? All right. The choices were Seth Rogen, Christina Applegate, or Pete Davidson. Um, should we the let. Guy Fieri fans. Right. Yeah, the Guy Fieri thing. Gina, you want to go first? Sure. Um, this feels like he's trying to be a little ironic because, you know, besides you, Adam, and frankly, Brian, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people kind of think of Guy Fieri as a little bit of a joke. And I think this is maybe Pete Davidson's attempt at humor. So I'm going to say, Pete, Pete, you know, don't tell me yet, but that's my guess. Yeah, the, the, the only one I can eliminate, I think, is Christina Applegate. So uh, between the two guys that would end their tweet with dude, I'm going to agree with Gina and say, uh, Pete. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. Oh, you Sylvester Stallone's up. Yeah, you got to tell you who would end a tweet with dude. You know what I'm saying, Adam? Yeah, I do. I do, Sly. You know? Thanks for joining us. I See, I think, why is Christina Applegate up there in the first place? Right. And it's I, weird. I got, yeah, I got burned by Cory Booker, <laughs> and I didn't go with Cory Booker on the last one because I had the same question. Yeah. What are they doing up there? For that reason, I... Right. I go Christina Applegate. What do you think, Sly? That is, you know, you, you're a smart guy and that's really good deductible thinking that you do. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna throw a curveball myself and go with Guy Booker. Oh, there is no, that's not Even a person. A well, didn't you say Guy Booker was No, guy? we said Guy Fieri, and then we said Cory Booker from before. Right. Cory Booker for the win. No. <laughs> no. But he's not, even, he's not even a contestant in this round. He's not in this. All right, so, all right, so I'm going to go with, uh, let me do the, uh, the guy with the beard, Seth Rogen. I think he would say dude. Okay. Seth yeah. Rogen. All right. Yeah. The blog belongs to Christina Applegate. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Come on. That's why she's up there. The, you know what's not fair about that is it was a trickery question. A that trick shouldn't count. Shouldn't count, Sly? It shouldn't count because it was trickery. Where uh, mm. where are you? You uh, in Florida or something right now? You're working on the <laughs> yeah, Untouchables? Yeah, I'm in the same place. It's funny. I'm at the, the same place as... Sorry. I'm in the same place as Biden, Trump, and uh, Pete <laughs> Davidson. We're all in the same hotel room. Wow, that's wow. oddly enough. That's quite a golfing foursome you put together there. <laughs> yeah, we all cheat. I forgot to change my background. I am in Florida. Is, uh, when's the Expendables coming out? Expendables 4? Uh, it's 4. No, we're up to like 62. Oh, okay. <laughs> even more, even more expendable. <laughs> You know? Oh boy! That's the tagline. You got a lot people who go to movies for the log line. It doesn't even matter what's inside the movie. What's log that? line's good. So Don't what's go. the log line for the Expendables again? Expendable sixty two. Even more expendable. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're even right. more would, expendable. You know is the. Log I would line. see that. I would see that. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. <laughs> All right. If Hollywood wasn't being so hypocritical, it would have already made four films, two comedies, and at least one TV limited series about the Hunter Biden laptop. And everyone would want to play Hunter and Biden and Obama. They would be coveted roles. Is it Randy Quaid, Scott Kevin Bale. Sorbo, or Scott Bale? Scott Bale. Bale. <laughs> Scott Bale. Be Scott Bale in there somewhere. I didn't. Adam, these are all close friends of yours, so you have an advantage. I here. know. Oh, uh, boy, feels, I mean, I, 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 Sorbo, I, I don't think, I know Sorbo is conservative, but I don't think he's pushing it out there that that hard, but maybe he is, I, 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 I don't know. I watched a, uh, I watched a faith-based film starring Kevin Sorbo called God's Not Dead. He's pushing it out there. <laughs> is he, he's pushing out his faith and everything else, but is he really... Pushing the Hunter yeah. Biden thing. He is. Okay. Oh, the Hunter Biden thing, I don't know. He claims that he can't get work because he's conservative and not because he's Kevin Sorbo. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it limits, it, 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 it hobbles your uh, ability to work in, in Hollywood. But, but if, you're, if, you're, if you're John Voight, you can probably overcome it. But I don't know if Sorbo can. Scott Bayo. But it is a thing. I mean, if you're conservative, it definitely limits, it, it definitely hurts you in Hollywood. But these guys... Clint Eastwood's made a movie a year for the last 20 years. Yes, Brian, you're always right. It does, is, is it a push, or what would it be if you came out as conservative? <laughs> what do you think? Oh, for Kevin Thorpe? Oh, you takes him down for a one. No, I you're just right. mean That's in general. Oh, do you, would it just be if you just come out oh, as conservative? Know, all joking aside, yes, it can't help your case. I, I think it hurts. Do you think it hurts? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's agreeing with you. It's a it's a degree. I don't know how much, but it, it definitely hurts your uh, your higher ability. So I'm going to put my tinfoil hat back on and say that I still believe that Tim Allen should have voiced the Lightyear movie as Buzz Lightyear. And perhaps that was the reason. Um, yeah, he's oh, yeah, well, he's yeah, he doesn't uh, he gets punished a little bit. All right, let's do it. Salone, what Whoa. do you think? I f- forget about Hunter Biden. I just would love to see a laptop movie. Mm. That sounds like it would be a good movie. <laughs> about a laptop? Yeah, you know, a like laptop. Like a Disney movie? No, like a, a real laptop, you know, not animated. And it's just down and out, like a down and out laptop. You sort of come from behind, like unrealized potential of a laptop that then realizes his potential in the end, you know? And there's probably a love story in there as well. Feels I, like it doesn't matter. I, I mean, what would what would the the log line be for that? Because that's really <laughs> what's going to get us to the theater. Laptop. <laughs> Open it up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm there. Oh, wow. I would go. Open it up. See Open it up. See Who is that guy with the white beard? Who is that Santa Claus looking guy? I don't even know who that is. That was that was Randy Quaid. Mm-hmm. That was Randy Quaid. Oh, yeah. Jeez. I'm yeah. going to go with Scott Bale. He's white. I think Scott Bale always yearned for that role. You know, he's always thinking in his head, what, I did something wrong. I was very famous. And then it went south. So he'd be someone who would say something like that, in my opinion. This feels Randy Quaid-ish yeah. Yeah. to me. Ooh. Huh? Mm. Yeah, I tend to agree with Mr. Stallone. I think that this is less of a, of a hot take and more of a, a cry for help in the casting department saying like, hey, I could play Hunter Biden if we want to get honest here. If we're ready to have this honest conversation, I'm going Bayo. Yeah, I like that. I have I zero. Like that Gina Grad. Maybe we could go to a movie <laughs> sometime or a dinner. I don't know. I could buy you something oh, nice. I, I don't know. Go out I'm sometime. Fla- I mean, I'm married, Mr. Stallone, but I'm, I'm very flat. I was down for dinner, yeah. Like, oh, yeah how how married? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm pretty I'm married. married. I mean, it's been less than a year, so we're pretty still married, pretty hot and heavy. But yeah. not very married. You're just pretty married. <laughs> You're not very married. Um, You're pretty married. Okay. I guess you got me there. Yeah, I'm pretty married. I'll wait, yeah. I'll wait it out. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So Brian, do you, do you got Sorbo? Who do you got? Uh, I have zero points, so take this for what it's worth. But Randy Quaid, I feel, will be more histrionic. I'm going to go with the more measured Kevin Sorbo. All right. Ryan, would you like to have dinner with me sometime? I don't know. <laughs> that sounds Gina, great. Gina's not going to show up, apparently. All right. I'm in. The blog belongs to... Hey, wait, I didn't go yet, did I? Oh, I did. I said the guy Scott Bayo. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he said Scott Bayo. Uh, the blog belongs to Randy Quaid. Yeah! So we, we actually have a tie. You want one more? All right, one more. Tiebreaker. Okay. Who's tied? Who's tied? Who's it, tied? It's... it's Sly and Adam. Well, it's not yeah. Sly. Yeah. It's, it's, tr- it's Tranny Trump. It's Trans Trump. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Trump. man. Do I got to go put a, a wig on? Yeah, Hold on. <laughs> it's Trans Trump. Oh, well, no. Hold yeah, well, Chris reads the blog. You go ahead and get dressed. Okay. I'm not a billionaire, but please tax the shit out of me if it means that everyone gets Medicare for all, free college tuition, and a chance to live their lives with dignity. Oh, and reducing the military budget and taxing churches couldn't hurt either. Hashtag tax the rich. Is it Deborah Messing or Susan Sarandon? 
Well, hold know. on. First off, you self-righteous cunts, just fucking give all your money to the government then and shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. you don't... Just fucking just give, you know, carve out enough to buy a can of beans and a fucking can of Sterno to heat it up and a little plot of land to park a double wide on and just fucking give the rest of the government. Uh, by the way, like the, first off, why does college have to be free? I, I don't, I don't get it. Like, we got to make college free. It's not fucking free if you go to welding school or truck driver school. Why does college have to be fucking free? Just fucking save up and go to college, number one. Uh, number two, feel free to give away all your fucking money if you'd like, but uh, you don't. But and, and the rich pay all the fucking taxes anyway. It's such a weird... Exactly. Am I right, Tranny Trump? 100%. We keep this country afloat. We're like booing all those poor people. They should thank us. They should all thank well, us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm with you, Transtrum. So, Deborah Messing, you know Deborah Messing? She's a total disgusting person. <laughs> yes, I do know her. Okay. And uh, then there's Susan Sarandon. She was uh, Thelma and Louise. Total pig. I know her well <laughs> and her family. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Which one do you think's more attractive? Uh, let's see here. I mean, are we saying right now or in their prime? Because that's totally different things. Okay, you're right, right. I never really thought about it. Both at age 38 and a half. Okay, okay. Very old, but still bangable age. As you know, Adam, I am a lesbian. Trans Trump does right. like the ladies. Uh -huh. So I do, you know, do some taco diving. You know, I'm a fan of the tuna. Oh, boy. Wow. A fan of the tuna. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to say Susan Sarandon because I think I could hate F her, if you know what I mean. I don't want to be disgusting here, but I could really <laughs> agree in the bedroom with Susan Sarandon. Uh, you would hate fucker, I think they call it? I don't want to use that word, but yes. Hate F. <laughs> so if I'm getting this right, it's trans Trump and Scissor Sarandon. Mm -hmm. Scissor Sarandon, that's right. <laughs> Flip All right. over, strap one on, and I'd go to town with scissor oh, serrated. All right, let's hear the blow hardy blog one more time, just so I can dry heave into my mouth. I'm not a billionaire, but please tax the shit out of me if it means that everyone gets Medicare for all, free college tuition, and a chance to live their lives with dignity. Oh, and reducing the military budget and taxing churches. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, this fucking thing where it's like, we got to take money from these people so these people can live their lives in dignity. How about you get a fucking job? That helps. That, it's, it's, uh, how much? Why, why does dropping off a sack of money to your hapless ass who doesn't fucking feel like working? Why is that dignity? You know, you get dignity from purpose. You get purpose from a job and a career and a fucking day's work. You don't get fucking dignity from the government. Hey, here's some free cheese. Here's some fucking free government cheese and some fucking food stamps and a debit card. There's your dignity. Why, what is that? We're fucking, it's, it's, it's ass backwards fucking land we're living in. You don't get dignity through getting free shit from celebrities who are being taxed, you crazy cunt. Absolutely. Fuck you. I'm sorry, I'm pissed. I'm so tired of everyone going, these people deserve to live in dignity. Well, first off, I thought being poor was kind of noble. Like I thought working hard and, you know, putting in a day's work and being like sort of, you know, poor but proud, you know. I mean, all the people you see getting in a pickup truck and going to work or all the people you see slinging the hash uh, over there at the Waffle House or whatever. Don't, don't those people have dignity? <laughs> they, they fucking work. Well, the opposite of dignity is free shit from the government, you fucking idiots. Jesus Adam, Christ. you even said it for yourself. Yeah. You said it yourself. Everybody's rushing to claim that they lived in their car. Why would we do that if we didn't have a modicum of respect for that kind of grit? Yes, I so, used to have dignity. I used to work for a living. Now I stand on stage true. and shout about dignity. The worst people in the world are the children of rich people because they didn't work for it. That's why, you know... I hope to, uh, you know, 
not give Barrett anything from here on out. This is my plan. Oh, boy. Wow. Well, okay. I, will, I will say this. <clears throat> when Don Jr. did my podcast, and in his book, he said he grew up on a construction site and he knew the difference between the sound of a sawzall or an impact wrench or a high point saw. And it was in his book, and I brought in those tools and I hid them in the, in the production booth. Chris was there. And I said, get a, get a microphone on there and let's see if he can tell the difference between a reciprocating oh, saw. Oh, no. No. That didn't, that didn't and, go well, did and, it? In an impact wrench, he knew the sound of all the tools. You did, you did a good job. Oh, terrific. Terrific. Yeah. I'm very shocked. There's no calluses on that boy's hands. Never was. <laughs> Never was. Well, he knows the sound of the tools, even if he's yeah. never held them he in his hands. He used to he torture our cats tool. with those uh, tools. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, Trans Trump, what do you think? Deborah yes. Massing or Susan Sarandon? Susan Sarandon for the Trump win. You're going to be feeling like a total loser in about. I'm going Deborah Massing because I believe she's even blow hardier than Susan Sarandon. The blog belongs to Susan Sarandon oh, for the show. Yes. Look, I'm never bet against Trump. Next time, I've keep your fingers on your keyboards it. and your heads up your asses so we can play another round of blah, blah, blah. Trans Trump is tri- literally sh- unbeatable in this game. I should not have even been in some final tie round. Okay, I got zero wrong. Mm. And it's up. interesting because Two losers because came in and ruined my thing. <laughs> Sly Stallone has been wrong. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum has been wrong. Joe Biden's always wrong. Trump never loses. Trump, Trump, never Trump loses. took two rounds off and still dominated. Trump, the the best ever at blah blah blah. Everyone knows this. Everyone knows this. <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm breaking down the fourth wall, but Kyle Dunnigan. If you ever have to take your written test at the DMV or if you have to take LSATs or you want to become an attorney or something, you have to do it as trans Trump. Absolutely. You don't do it as Pete Davidson. That's going to be a shit show. Yeah, no, I do feel like when I'm doing trans Trump, I know more about this game and I know who tweeted things or something. You're channeling Yes, you're channeling these celebrities. All right, should we do a little uh, news, Gina Grad? And and, uh, Kyle can be whatever he wants. Weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gina Grass. Don't face all on TMZ. Joe Biden. Come on. Meet news with Gina Gina Grass. The news with Gina Grad. Well, we have some piping hot Musk news, and I'm not talking about Elon. I'm talking about his father, Errol. Oh. Errol Musk has revealed he has sired a secret second child with his <laughs> stepdaughter. Uh, her name is Jana Bazudahont. Excuse me. Wait, God with bless his, you. With his own stepdaughter? Correct. Oh, no. Errol is 76 years old. Uh, he welcomed a girl with 35-year-old Jana back in 2019, but has only now confirmed that that is his baby. Um, he, the, the two already All right, have let a me, Let me just baby. say this. Yeah. He can spread his seed as far and wide as he can. That man has genius seed, obviously. And I would, I would oh, Elon... Yeah, okay. I am saying if I was ever with Arrow Trump, uh, Trump, Arrow, uh, Elon's dad. Uh, the the point is, he's, he's definitely not your dad. Yeah, no, I. But you know how Drake puts hot sauce into the condom when he's done with his lady so they don't steal it? I would definitely steal your dad's seed if we were together. That's very, very good sperm. Very good sperm. But, and what's, I mean, going I, on, what's going on with Twitter? Are you going to buy that? So, so no, no, that was all just like sort of a, sort of a joke. I thought, that, uh, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So you're not, but don't you have to give them a billion dollars now? Uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I have to give them a billion dollars, mm -hmm. but it was it was worth it <laughs> for, for the joke. Mm -hmm. It was a, a, a billion dollar joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like you just bought a billion dollar whoopee cushion, essentially, like just a, a joke. You spent a billion dollars for a practical joke. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I could have bought a, a billion. Uh, Whoopi cushions too, either either or, mm -hmm. but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay, so the dad got the step. Wait, who did he get pregnant? Jenna? The step. Yeah, he got the stepdaughter pregnant twice. He raised her, by the way, from age four to twenty-two. Uh, there's about a forty-one year gap in between them. Uh, they're no longer living together. <laughs> That's not the main problem. <laughs> They're, they're no longer living together. He cites, oh, and both the, present, the, the pregnancies were unplanned. He told the publication that the, the, the age gap is the reason they're not together. Kyle, you don't do a Woody Allen, do you? Uh, <laughs> hold on, I do. <laughs> if you do do a Woody oh, Allen, fun. now's the time. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Talk it's amongst real. yourselves for... Uh, All right, we'll talk Here's amongst ourselves while you look for Woody While Allen. we do that, let's cool. not forget that, um, that uh, Elon, right, so. uh, that we know about, has eight children, and he's really into spreading his seed far and wide. He and his father have both been quoted as saying their job on this earth is to reproduce. Oh, yeah, this, oh there's Mr. This Allen. This topic is a little uncomfortable <laughs> for me here. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, all right. I feel the crowd is getting uncomfortable with all the pedophiles. <laughs> you don't say. Uh, where's Stallone? Bring Stallone back. Uh, yeah, why would we bring that Woody <laughs> Allen guy in? Come on, man. I don't know. Yeah, I, Stallone's I, I, more fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. Stallone's that's way more fun. Yeah, it's more of a New York crowd. Too. Yeah, we don't yeah. talk about kids when Stallone comes on. Yeah. Sorry, Gina. What else you got? What would you... Let's talk about alcohol and the elderly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So a new study shows that uh, surprisingly alcohol recommendation for people under 40. Do you know how much you're supposed to drink if you're under 40 oh, years I, old? I, these goddamn tests. They, first off, the like, are you an alcoholic tests? You know, they go like, have you ever done anything you regret the next day? Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever uh, drank so much that you threw up? Yes, let's check that. Go ahead and check that box. Have you ever uh, been pulled aside at a party and cold? Uh, yes, check check that, check that. And hey, then, ever, ever hit a kid and you drive yeah, a car? Hit a kid, drive in a car. Bag and then you drive. <laughs> check, check. What? It's all, it's check every fucking box except for, you know, dr drive into a nunnery and, and, and demolish the sisters. And then when you do the thing, it goes, if you said yes to more than three of these, it's like, I said yes to 28 of the 30, not three. But the amount of alcohol is always a sad one too. Like they go, you're allowed to have three ounces of red wine a night or whatever like that. It's a like, sip a week? Yes, that, that, that's not gonna get it done. Why drink at all? Sorry, go point? ahead, Gina. Well, that's exactly what, they, what they're they thinking because the apparently, according to the study, the exact right amount of alcohol if you're under 40 is zero. Great. They say that there is no upside to drinking if you're less than 40, but it can include car accidents, heart diseases, stroke, diabetes, and murder. And babies. <laughs> and babies, that's right. And then, and then subsequently murdering your babies later on. But, <laughs> but, you, but you were right. They do say that if you're over 40, a little bit of alcohol can be good for you, and you are right there with 3.4 ounces. Oh, God, it's not even... It's travel size. I, it, it, it first things, okay. Couple things. Uh, yeah, it's not good for you, and, you know, chili dogs aren't good for you, and, uh, you know, Pop-Tarts aren't good for you. I mean, all the good stuff in life is not good for you. Oh, Pop-Tarts are good for you. Oh, There's they are? The of, uh, yeah, the fruit in the middle of Pop-Tart. You know, they need your fruit every day. You eat... I mean, Stallone's in the, he's in the best shape of all of us. Uh, yeah, no nutrition. What, no nutrition. What, what Pop-Tarts eat, Sly? What's your flavor? You know, a strawberry, you know, blueberry, you know. 
Banana, banana pop tart. Oh, I didn't know they had those. <laughs> Are those all? You should... Do you like them frosted? No, no, I like the healthy pop tart with just the fruit oh, in it. Okay, <laughs> got it. But I thought you were just pretty much like a very strict diet, high protein, a lot of creatine, like that, that, that kind of stuff. Some uh, human growth hormone, it, that kind of stuff. It's, no, just whatever I want and steroids. Uh, <laughs> it's just two things. So it's pretty much just pop, pop tarts and steroids? Pop tarts and steroids. <laughs> and then, you know, lunch, I'll have something else with my steroids. I, I got like a, you have like a salt shaker. I got like a steroid shaker I've just put on. Steroids. You just shake on the steroids? Yeah. yeah, my testicles have gone back up inside my body, which is fun. Never liked them out at, anyway, really. Yeah, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's true that this, the, 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 the scrotum sack hanging outside is really just a liability. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. It's disgusting. More no. harm than, more, more harm than good. Yeah, nothing more good, good. nothing good, good could come of it. It's, it's, it's a target, you know, if someone's trying no. to assault. Yep. Just like walking through uh, a park at night wearing a Rolex, you know what I mean? You're just asking <laughs> for trouble. Exactly. And sometimes if your I hands was, are behind your back and you need something off a table, you might want to slap them up there and sort of pull them, that thing down you need with your testicle sack. But that's about it. What if we I was told that getting hit in the balls is like, um, it's like a white hot fiery pain that goes into your stomach and makes you feel like you're going to like puke fire. Is that correct? Oh yeah. Pretty much. I'm seeing yeah. heads yeah. nodding. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. That's it. That's, that's exactly right. What if they had a steroid flavored pop tart? Do you think that's something? Oh, you could... oh that was a fly right off the shelf. <laughs> yeah, that that you could you could make a Reese's peanut butter cup out of your two take your two favorite ingredients, steroids and pop tarts, mm. and you put them together. Yum! And then we have a bunch of like ripped kids in our schools fighting. You know all those school shootings. It might be good. Might be yeah. a good thing. <laughs> Slice right. All right, let's do another one, Gina. All right, well, it keeps coming up. We can't let it die, no pun intended, but we have another Weekend at Bernie's real story. Mm. Um, an Irish man is under arrest and facing a slew of fraud charges after he, with the help of his buddy, dressed up his dead uncle and, like, walked him into a post office to collect his pension check. That's good. I like that. <laughs> the real-life Weekend at Bernie's scene, you know, played out in Italy, I'm sorry, Ireland, when 40-year-old Declan Honey took the body of his dead 66-year-old <laughs> uncle to a local post office, claimed that his he was alive and well and grabbed the retirement payment. He brought along his friends so they could, like, carry him on both sides. Uh, the scheme was later discovered... <laughs> like a three-legged race? That's right. Was later discovered, and both men were arrested and charged with attempted deception and attempted theft, Honey is fighting the charges and claims his, do his uncle died suddenly at the post office. Oh, they're taking me to get the check. Right, and he just, he, he was handed the check and then keeled over. They're not buying it, though. The post-mortem uh, examination determined that the uncle died much earlier and uh, he's due back in court in the fall. The Do post office does take a long time. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> If you've ever been to the airport in Dublin, I could see that taking quite a while. I, I had this morbid thought many, many years ago, like when I was 19 or 20 or something, which is, you know, everyone talks about how expensive a funeral is and a casket and the headstone and, and what a ripoff it is. And so oh, yeah. somebody dies, a loved one dies, and then it costs the living a shitload of money to do away with them. But why not be able to profit off the person that died. Like, you know, my dad, he, he's not a big earner, you know what I mean? But if he died, why shouldn't I get something for that? But then what do you do? Like, how do you, how do you profit off of a, a corpse? And I was thinking stunt work. <laughs> Oh, my God. Because, you know, they throw the fucking dummy off the top of the building yeah. and you go, oh, it's so yeah. fake, fake, it's so fake. Yeah. Or once in a while they chop a head off of the samurai sword, but you can tell it's a mannequin and that's just ketchup. 
But I'm talking real blood and gut stunt work, you know, where you go, that fucking stunt man died doing that shit. <laughs> and, and, and you know, they do the move where the guy jumps off the building and you see him, but then, you know, it goes behind the boxes and you know, he landed on an airbag, fucking right on the sidewalk. Boom, fucking you. guts everywhere. I'll do you one better, Adam. I'll do you one better. <laughs> I, I, this is off your idea that I thought of this, but it's better than your idea. We get people who want to kill themselves. So then you got an active guy, you know, running <laughs> right. off the plate. Sly's right. Sly's got some good ideas. Yeah, no one's going to pay you to kill yourself, but this is a way yeah. to leave some money behind. And no one in your family would have to be shocked when they walked into your room and saw you hanging you know or anything and they'd, then you be got right, that, they'd be on you set got that, yeah you got that movie suicide four <laughs> even even more suicidey yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could like hook GoPros up to them and shit, and really Absolutely. have them fly off buildings. Yes, yeah, so. I got a, I got a way to make this a win-win. Like like uh, terminal cancer patients, they can't get life insurance, right? They're screwed. They're uninsurable. You go up to them and say, "Hey, I got you, you know, five thousand dollars or fifty thousand, whatever it is, for this crazy stunt. They will kill you, but uh, think of it like uh, life insurance." Yeah, and yeah. you'll be a star. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine, you know, one of those, like, Thelma and Louise stunts where they're going off the yes. ground. Like, they ride it all the way yes. down. <laughs> right. Right. God, Stallone's got great ideas. I don't know, Stallone. I'm thinking, I think I started that idea. No, with no, my... no, no. You started it, but Stallone brought it over the finish line with a brilliant stroke. <laughs> It is it is true. Nothing more realistic than actual human beings being killed. And and maybe you could use a lot of these stunt corpses. Absolutely. We killed a couple of guys, but if I had gotten people who wanted to die, that would have been I would have felt less guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grad. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. That was the news with Gina Grad. All right. Kyle Dunnigan, subscribe to his YouTube page at youtube.com slash Kyle Dunnigan. Always brings it. Bald and Gina as well. A stellar job. The Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode. The Jordan Harbinger Show. Well, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts with interesting people, you should definitely check it out. Jordan's a good guy, smart guy, speaks a bunch of languages, has had a lot of life experiences. He's been on the show and uh, has been on with me and Drew as well. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. He'll talk to Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter. He'll talk to a guy who's an expert in wildlife trafficking. He'll go inside that dark world. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost productivity or slight mindset tweaks that change how you see the world. We enjoy the show, and I think you're going to enjoy it too. And you can search it, search it out. The Jordan Harbinger Show. That's H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R, on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're you listen to uh, your favorite podcast. Let's bring up our ball puller here, Scott and uh, Larissa. I believe is the is the name. You guys filled out the balls before the show. Scott is going to get an assist from his wife. I think it's uh, Larissa. S Scott is seeing impaired, so he's going to have to step up. It's fucking blind. Uh, yeah, I'll call it blind. <laughs> Whatever. He's blind. Get uh, here, get Larissa, guide the blind guy over to the chairs over there and uh, sit him down. There you go. There you go. I, uh, <clears throat> I don't see, I was told that you your eyesight was not good but it, it is is it pure blind can what can you no, see I can see lights and 
You can see, li- oh yeah. Can yeah, you I see the light. fucking microphone? <laughs> no. I should talk into it. Yeah, pull that mic, pull that mic up. All right, there. so Larissa is pulling the, pulling the balls. Yeah, she And so what, what do you, are, you, are you able to work? Do you have one of those blind guy jobs, like <laughs> bead stringer or something? No, I uh, retired from trucking. Oh, you're a truck driver. <laughs> no, uh, I, <laughs> no, I can't fit a cane on the truck, so I was a manager in the office. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I, I, I think in a, in a weird way, being blind is probably in this horrible society we've crafted with fucking garbage everywhere and graffiti everywhere and homeless. Like, I wish I was blind. Someone should blind me before I return to L.A. because it's so full of garbage and just graffiti and homelessness and trash everywhere. But then also your other senses get more acute, right? Oh, um, yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> That's what so they say. let's put him to the test. <laughs> I just farted. <laughs> what was in my omelet that I had? <laughs> I, I pick and choose my senses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larissa, you pulled a ball out of there. Okay. You got teenage kids, so mm-hmm. you want to play a mulligan? Why? What's this one say? Lynette. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I don't want to embarrass myself. But what's that ball say? It doesn't say Lynette, it's, does it, it? It says sandals. Let me see what the fucking <laughs> thing says. Sandals? Yes, yes. All right, don't be a bitch. Come on. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Sandals. I saw a fucker walking around in this town yesterday in rope sandals. And I don't know if you guys have seen rope sandals. It was sandals fashioned out of rope. Now, I'm not a mariner, and I'm not a fucking hippie, and I don't know where the fuck you would get rope sandals, but why do we even need sandals when we have flip-flops? Because my, my feeling is, is a, a sandal is basically just a more expensive, slightly less comfortable flip-flop. And it's really just a flip-flop with a heel strap. And you go, all right, well, I have more stability in my, with a sandal than a flip-flop. But I've never walked down the street and thrown a flip-flop. Like, it's never, I'm not Jimmy Buffett over here. He stepped on a pop top. He blew out his flip flop. Come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. To walk you through every joke. Oh, wait, wait till These guys are sitting up here with flip flops. They're not going anywhere. You didn't have to be carried into the club. You didn't have difficulty getting out of the car. You're fine with your flip flops. This gal over here has got the sandals, which is uh, essentially it's a flip flop that costs 62 percent more with no real advantage. And there's no such thing as flip flops and socks. There is such a thing as sandals and socks. Is that simply because of that vagina that's between the big toe and the second toe? And that's the only thing that is stopping you from wearing socks is the one crack where the big toe is, right? And what do you think? All right, so let me ask you this hypothetical because I do see guys wearing sandals with socks, but I never see flip-flops with socks, and it's simply the crease. It's they can't get the space between the big toe. Is that is is that correct? You gotta poke it down. You gotta poke it down. And what's more what's more of a statement? Is my wife, it, it, my wife will tell you you can't do that. You can't no, you can't wear socks and, and flip flops. Is 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 flip flops more of a statement or is sandals more more of a statement? Um, oh we got sandals. we got a lot of fucking sandals uh, up front here. I, I get it. I get it. It's hot. But uh, I, I, does anyone, has anyone ever went, damn, man, the top of my feet are so hot. <laughs> and it, it's hot. It's not a good excuse because then we'd all be in our fucking underwear right now. It's like, oh, man, it is hot. <laughs> so 
And when I'm hot, my feet are never hot. My head gets hot, your back gets sweaty, your ass crack gets moist, but it's never, it's never your feet. I've never, I've never felt like I couldn't wear shoes because of the temperature outside. I feel in general, the flip-flop is, it's a little bit of a lifestyle. It's also kind of a slippery slope, you know what I mean? Like this, these two guys up here in their flip-flops would have been totally unacceptable 14 years ago, right? Now it's, it's common. And every time, and let me just tell you, when it comes to casual footwear, I will give you this, uh, this, this, this piece of advice. If you're going to buy a slipper, do not buy one with the rubber sole. That's an invitation for you to wear your slippers outdoors, and we don't want to fucking see you with that. I've seen this new, uh, you know, the My Pillow guy. He's got a new line of slippers, and he says they got a big, durable rubber sole. That just means a bunch of born again Christian slipper wearing assholes are going to be at the fucking supermarket. I don't want to see people. I see people wearing slippers at LAX now. Somehow, slippers have become okay, and I blame the flip flop guys. The flip-flop guys, because that's a, pardon the pun, that's a stepping stone drug right there. It's the, the, the people, the, the I'm gonna wear slippers outdoors people would have never had the opportunity had not you flip-flop assholes paved the way for them. Because you could wear your flip-flops, you wear them around the house, you could walk down to the mailbox, but you sure as fuck didn't go to restaurants, movie theaters, airports, or comedy clubs in your goddamn flip-flop. But a few years ago, a couple pioneers said, fuck it, I'm going in public with my flip-flops on, and then the slipper people looked out the window because they were scared to leave the house in their flippers and went, well, those fuckers barely have anything on their feet and they're doing fine. Fuck it. I'm going out in my slippers. And now, what kind of future can my children look forward to? Like people just wearing Kleenex boxes like Howard Hughes? <laughs> people who should be walking around with their feet in anything at this point. I mean, we went from wingtip shoes to loafers to boots to flip-flops to sandals to fucking slippers. And again, what... Where do we go? What's what is below? What is below slipper? I, I don't I don't think I don't think it's been it's not been invented like Crocs. Crocs. Oh, Crocs. Fucking people. Not only are people wearing the Crocs, I, I the guy I like the laziest motherfucker on the planet is the guy who's wearing the Crocs, but he has the heel hook which is like the handle on a pail. He has them flipped forward because it's too much energy just to take your thumb and forefinger and hook it around your heel. How, do you, how lazy is this motherfucker? Like, do you think he has the croc sitting by the foot of his bed and in the morning, two people lower him down into those crocs because he's so fucking lazy he can't touch his own feet? I used to look at my grandfather with the Velcro straps on his tennis shoes and go, you lazy fuck. <laughs> now there's Crocs, and now people are badging up the Crocs. Do you, have you seen this? I, I have, every time I do uh, one of those uh, Hannity or Tuck or whatever, the, the makeup lady has Crocs that are highly decorated. Have you seen this? It's like she has little hearts and little, uh, it's like a fucking Lucky Charms box down on her feet. It's like, you're, the la you're wearing the world's laziest shoes and you've adorned them now with non-shoe shit, like, like refrigerator magnets or something. And who the fuck invented the croc? Do you think that guy was like, I need a shoe that could, could survive 14 years in the Pacific Ocean. And if it fucking washed up, I could wear them that day. And they would be in fine shape. Because I feel like that, has anyone, let me ask you this, has anyone worn out Crocs? Does anyone want, you know, I've worn right through these Crocs, I can no longer wear these Crocs, I must purchase new Crocs. I don't think anyone has ever worn out Crocs. But 
I also feel like nobody's ever used the last rolling paper. I feel like they use the first one, they get stoned, and then they lose their rolling papers. It's just a thought. Should we pull another? What was that? Sandals? Oh, there's, uh, yeah. a, there's a nice resort called Sandals. Yeah. Do you guys... I don't like those commercials. Everyone's too fucking good looking. Have you seen those Sandals commercials? The fucking best looking people in the world. And the, uh, the chick's totally hot and she's happy. And uh, they got those cabanas over the water. And no one's peeing into them. No one ever is peeing off a dock. There's no, if I was to add one of those cabanas on the water that was held up by pier pylons, I would not only piss into the water, I would take a dump. I'd be like, <laughs> honey, hold my forearm. I'm going to lean out over the... Sorry. We got another ball? There it is. Parasite. Parasite. Is that what it says? All right. Just checking. <laughs> I won't mess with you no more. Parasite. <laughs> I, uh, I got twin parasites at home. <laughs> They're ordering Grubhub as we speak. The, the, the deal is, is I go on the road and make the money. They stay home and see how fast they can spend it. Parasites, uh, I like the... There are certain parasites I, I like, and then certain ones I don't understand. Like, there are parasites that are little, you know, microscopic things that, like, live in your gut. I have no time for that. The one I'm most interested in are those... Um, and I don't know if they fall into the parasite category, but you ever see those pilot fish that are stuck to shark's bellies? I think they're fucking eating stuff that's on the shark. You've got to look it up. I don't know if they're draining blood. Like, oh, they're lampreys. All right, so, all right. But they're parasites, right? And they're stuck to, like, sharks. Like tiger sharks and great white sharks. They have these little rays stuck to them. And I, on one hand, I don't like them. On the other hand, I admire their courage because there had to be one who had the idea. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm hungry. Well, why don't we eat some minnows? No, no. Let's stick ourselves to the side of that 23-foot great white shark. The other fucking parasite lampreys had to go, fuck no, you're on your own. I'm not doing this shit. And then also, I've been watching the news. A lot of shark attacks are attacking surfers and swimmers. They're always out feeding. Why not eat the fucking thing that's on your belly? You know what I mean? Like, if I was walking around hungry all the time sharks evidently are always hungry and i had like jerky stuck to my belly i would eat you know what i'm it's the same difference if i had like slim jims hanging off my gunt and i was just walking around hungry all the time i wouldn't fucking eat a surfer i would eat the thing that's fucking giving me a staph infection and removing the blood from me did you look those things up are they lampreys yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find a good picture of one on a shark, but yeah, lamprey eels. Yeah, and then, but they're not pilot fish. That's, some, that's something else. All right, anyway, the, the point is, is they're parasites, and uh, parasites, have, like I said, they have a lot of range. I have, they have your lamprey eels that are on sharks. You have uh, certain, certain family members at home that technically fall <laughs> under that. I like the tapeworm. That's the best. You guys ever see a tapeworm on someone? That's the ultimate parasite. And then there's the parasite of the one that crawls up your urethra when you're in like the Amazon River. I don't think those exist. I don't. I think that's what you say when you don't want white people in your river. <laughs> you know, it's like, the, the Trump brothers show up in their tr swimming trunks, you know, hey, we'd like to go in your river. Well, let me tell you about something that lives in this river. <laughs> what is it, a big fish or something? I can deal with that. No, no, it's a parasite. Crawls up your dick. Oh, uh, maybe we'll go back to the hotel. All right, let's pull another ball there. But don't you think that was invented to keep Whitey out of the river? 100%. 100%. What better? I've, 
I'd like to do it with my swimming pool. Because I had my fucking, my, fr- my, 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 my kids brought all their goddamn friends over there all through the summer and the fucking pH got all fucked up and then weird shit started growing in the pool and now the pool man's like, we have to drain it. And I'm from LA. They'll let you water your lawn every three years for 10 minutes. Fuck draining 50,000 gallons where the pool's gonna cost 7,500 bucks and I'll get a fine from the city to refill that thing. I'm gonna try to convince my son's friends that there's a parasite in that pool that will crawl up your cock. <laughs> I could do it. <laughs> Sorry, what do we got? Uh, the next one is pussy. Pussy. I'm not going to get into the uh, actual uh, vulva as it pertains to the pussy. I'm going to get into what the fuck has happened to dudes in this country. Yeah. What? And why, why is it okay to be a pussy? There's so many pussies in this country. I'm just talking about the fucking dudes. And I started, this is not a new thing. It's just been building and growing over the years. Like I, I remembered it when I started out and I was like at the man show and I'd be in the writer's room, you know, and I was just a dude from North Hollywood. I did construction. I played football in high school. I rode a motorcycle, got in a few fights, you know, I was just a dude, you know, and uh, all the dudes I knew were dudes. And what, what and I grew up with were all kind of dudes. And then at a certain point, I crossed over into Hollywood and show business. And that is the land of the fucking pussy. It's like pussies run free in Hollywood. With the, and they sit around and all their stories are about like, oh, as a hero, or they do a lot of that shit where they call people rock stars and heroes and shit who don't do shit. It's because they're pussies. And I would go in the writer's room and I'd hear these guys like tell these stories. And when I grew up, the the stories that dudes told were like, I was walking down the sidewalk and this dude fucking banged my shoulder. And I looked at him and I went, hey, fucker, you want some of this? And he fucking looked at me and I said, yeah, you fucking talk and I'll fucking kick your ass, dude. And he fucking looked at me and then I fucking looked at him and I said, that's right, you don't fucking want none of this. Keep fucking walking. And this dude walked. Like, that was every fucking story I heard. These guys are telling stories like this guy, I tapped this guy in traffic and he got out of his car. So I rolled the window up and tried to suck my own dick. <laughs> And then they start telling other stories like, I went down to my car, I went down to the garage and the tire was flat. So I had to call AAA and wait for the guy to come out and change the tire. And I'd be like, you have a spare tire? I have a spare tire, I don't know where it is. It's probably somewhere in the car, pussy. Well, I don't know how to work the jack or the, what do they call them, the uh, hub wrench or the lug dove, love handle wrench or the lug, lug it's called a fucking scissor jack and a lug wrench. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know anything about, it. I don't, I can't fight, I can't fix, I can't fuck, I'm a pussy. <laughs> and somehow they got paid and got laid for this activity. The fucking part where you pop the hood and know your way around a holly carburetor, you can change the flat or fucking flush your radiator on your car or punch out a neighbor. That's all, you don't get paid for that shit. I don't know why we've crafted a society where the scared pussies are the ones getting laid and getting paid and the fucking guys who know how to turn a ratchet aren't, they're just home beating off using tears for Lou. <laughs> Fucking sad. All right, let's do one more. Let's do one more. A woke. A wook? Woke. Woke. Oh, okay. Woke. What the hell happened? When did this become a thing? I, I am disgusted at our society and where we've gone in the the woke department as I like to say we're all woke and no joke anymore people cannot take a joke 
And I, there's little things. A lot of it is the wording. I, I've, I've realized like little, little things. Like here's a very little subtle thing that I was thinking about. I was talking about on the podcast a few weeks ago. Some football coach makes an off-color joke in the locker room or somebody writes a tweet out that uh, women find offensive or whatever it is. And then at some point, when they apologize, they go, I want to apologize to all who were affected by this. Um, nobody was affected by it because it was a fucking joke. If you were affected by it, then you're woke and or pussy. I've combined two balls. <laughs> we used to write, you know, we used to write when you apologize, when someone got upset, you would say, I will apologize to all who were offended. Not affected, offended. Offended means it's on you. Get your shit together and put your big boy pants on and stop being such a woke pussy. That's on you. Affected puts it on me because that means I've affected you, but I can't affect you with a fucking joke. So. This woke, weird-ass culture, which, by the way, I have no idea where the fuck it's going. The military is woke. They just did a training video the other day. Did you guys see this one on pronouns? My God, we better hope there's not another fucking... Uh, if another war breaks out, I think at this point, we might be able to take Canada. Because <laughs> they're more woke pussies than we are. But we're not going to be able to take on any of the non-woke co countries. We need to fight like maybe we could take Canada, parts of the Netherlands. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, Mexico, even though I'm not even sure if they would know they were in a war. Like, <laughs> sober up, you're in a war. I don't like woke, I don't like staying woke, I don't even really like being awake. My best, I'm at my best when I'm napping, you know what I mean? I mean, I didn't, I didn't like the physical part where I'm awake during the day. But I certainly, I am not down with the uh, all woke and the no joke. And the only way we can remedy this is if we just tell those people to fuck right off. Just fuck off. No apologies to you. All right. I want to thank uh, Scott and Larissa for coming up here and pulling balls. I want to thank Kyle Dunnigan. I want to thank uh, Gina and Bald. Until next time, this is Adam Carolla saying mahalo. And this person was saying to me, man, this guy, like so much talent, so he had so much to live for and he killed himself. And I said to the person, but think about all the people who have nothing to live for who never kill themselves. I mean, <laughs> that's a victory, right?